founding father John Adams stond aan de bakermat van de Verenigde Staten van Amerika. Elke Amerikaan kent zijn verhaal. Maar wat minder bekend is, is de grote rol die weggelegd was voor Nederland in de revolutie van Amerika. Niet door troepen te sturen of wapens, maar simpelweg geld. En die deal werd hier beklonken, aan de Herengracht in Amsterdam. We spreken James Kennedy, decaan en historicus van University College Utrecht... en de Amerikaanse ambassadeur, Pete Hoekstra. Mr. Ambassador, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Grachtenmuseum. A special place? A special place. This is one of the fantastic uh, legacies of the 17th century, the golden age, as they sometimes call it, built in 1663. So John Adams walked these stairs? A century later, John Adams walked these stairs. So this is the room where uh, Adams may have signed the piece of paper giving the United States five million guilders? Uh, this is the place. And that uh, five million guilders, of course, amount of that time to about two million dollars. Boy, do I miss the guilder. John Adams came here in the summer of 1780, and he was looking for a loan, but the Dutch bankers kept on saying, we won't do it, we won't take that risk until the Dutch government recognizes the United States as a sovereign So country. the government goes to work? Uh, well, <laughs> it took very long time. This, is this when Adams says they, uh, they talk much, debate long, Execute nothing? That's right, exactly. You know, some things never change. That's, it does sound oh. a bit like the modern Dutch. Uh, they can debate and deliberate for a very long time. Uh, and it was extremely frustrating uh, for him for a time. But then things change. And I think the thing that really changed is not so much what happened in the Netherlands, but what happened in the United States. The United you were winning. You were winning. And that shifted the Dutch government into a more helpful and uh, creative stance. Het zijn tumultueuze jaren voor de jonge republiek. Nog geen vijf jaar eerder zette John Adams zijn handtekening onder dit beroemde document, de Amerikaanse onafhankelijkheidsverklaring. Daarna volgt een bittere oorlog met het Verenigd Koninkrijk. Maar in 1781 krijgen de Amerikanen eindelijk de overhand. Door militaire hulp van de Fransen en financiële steun van Nederland. So, when this happens and the United States is recognized, John Adams then becomes the first American ambassador uh, to the Netherlands. And that's a function that he uh, fulfills uh, for a number of years after that. And it's also obviously a great success for him. And for the rest of his life, he talks very He's enthusiastically about He's always negotiating about agreements, right? John Adams is thrilled uh, when the Dutch both recognize his country and give him a loan. And for the rest of his life, He's very enthusiastic about the Dutch, so he keeps on showing his words of appreciation for the Dutch ever since the time of the signing of these very important agreements. Ronald Reagan proclaims April 19 as a special day of recognition and friendship uh, between the Netherlands and the United States. I think he does that, in, well, he obviously does it in the 80s, mm -hmm. uh, and it is still celebrated every year. Yes, it is. So it is. Uh, and it's obviously very important for the Americans to get this recognition. You're a young country as the United States, and so you want then uh, the international recognition. And so, yeah, that's something that the Americans uh, have continued to commemorate. Not that every American knows about it. Uh, we have to add that. We know about it in Holland, Michigan. They know about it in Iowa. That's right. State of Washington. The Dutch in America know it, and the bankers probably do. Uh, that's, uh, it did, in fact, set a long precedent, so if they don't know it, they should. Yeah. Perhaps one of the interesting things is John Adams and I share the same birth date, October 30. Is that right? Okay. Yes. So not in the same year, but the same day. So uh, that is... Um, in your relationship? My relationship with John Adams, I am a, uh, I'm a distant uh, cousin of John Adams. So uh, my ancestors come from New England and they intermingled with his relatives. And in that sense, we have a provable connection to John Adams. Nog even terug naar die belangrijke lening. Vijf miljoen gulden. Een astronomisch bedrag, zeker voor die tijd. This was a, a function as a banking house, also function as a banking house for Jan Willink, 
who was the uh, connection with John Adams to make this agreement. So in that sense, it seems uh, quite uh, probable that it was uh, signed here. And so how do you transfer five million guilders from the Netherlands to the US. I mean, are there a bunch of printed bills, a bunch of gold coins? How does that happen? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question because obviously just putting things on a ship is not particularly safe, especially not in the 1780s and when there's a, a war going on. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I think uh, that one of the questions might be that it's letters of credit you know, that are given so that the American government can say, we've got uh, our commitments backed by a Dutch banker, banking house. Yeah, amazing how they, yeah. uh, and how they would have moved those large amounts of money around yeah. you know, 240 years ago. Uh, it's been estimated uh, that that amounts to something like 120 billion euros at the moment. So that's uh, a lot of money. And today we push 120 billion euros uh, with, you know, bing, and it's gone. Naast het afsluiten van de o zo belangrijke lening met de Nederlanders, sluit John Adams in zijn periode in Amsterdam ook een vriendschapsverdrag met ons land. Later wordt hij de allereerste ambassadeur van de Verenigde Staten. En hij begint, hoe kan het ook anders, in de Republiek der Zeven Verenigde Nederlanden. Nu gaan we naar het huis waar John Adams lived when he was in Amsterdam. Well, this is the view he had. That's the canal, this is the street. Yeah, there are some changes, but this gives you a pretty good idea of what he would have seen. This is a crucial year, obviously, for John Adams, 1781, 1782. 1782, the breakthrough year uh, for John Adams becomes ambassador. And of course, from then, it's only onwards so and upwards. So he 120 billion euros <laughs> in the basement here. Uh, that's very unlikely. <laughs> It's nice to think about this as a kind of a mini Fort Knox. Uh, yeah. But uh, this would have been before, largely before he got the money. Uh, and so this is still his time chiefly of anticipation of the deal that's going to be made. So he, he's here in 1782. He leaves, goes on to the UK. But seven years later, he becomes vice president of the United States of America, the first vice president. That's right. And then a short period later, well, eight years later, uh, he becomes the second president of the United States. That's right. When George Washington decides that two terms is quite enough for him, uh, then his vice president declares himself to be a candidate in the elections of uh, 1796. And then he is elected the second president of the United States. In a very close election. In a very close election, it barely beats out Thomas Jefferson. And four years later, Thomas Jefferson barely beats out him. It's, of course, one of our longest living uh, presidents, and so spends the next quarter of a century uh, in relatively uh, quiet retirement. So Adams is really recognized and mostly remembered for all the work that he did to establish and create the nation, uh, not necessarily the work that he did as president. That's a good way of putting it, that John Adams is really obviously very important uh, for the founding years. Uh, for also getting international recognition, getting international finance. Uh, these are important things. His role as president is significant, but I think where he really stands in history is his role during the American War of Independence. So Adam is recognized as a, as a great diplomat, the agreements that he made, uh, and also recognizing that strong bonds are built through times of Adversity. That's right, and I think that that is essential. And uh, Adams was not an experienced diplomat. He had to learn uh, that game, and the Netherlands did not necessarily give him an easy time, but he kept working on it, and he kept on trying to solidify that relationship, and uh, in the end, it paid off. And it is important then always to keep on continuing to work on this. One of the things that Adams thought was very important and why he believed, actually, also that the Dutch Republic would come through. He says, you know, we are, we're a shared values community. Uh, we're both republics. We're both committed to the cause of freedom. Uh, this is why we belong with each other. I mean, that is, and we repeat that almost every day, mm -hmm. you know, that in times of difficulty, you stand with the allies and, you know, the relations that you've built.
Well, what we learned from John Adams is he knew how to make a deal. He made a deal with the Dutch. Uh, he got the Dutch to recognize the United States of America. He got them to give us a major loan so that the country could be financially stable, signed a major uh, trade treaty with the United States. So it was all about getting something done.